Hi, I'm Lane Amon, and I want to welcome you to 31 Days of Your Scrapbooking Q&As. Today's sponsor is Simon Says Stamp. If you have not yet checked out Kelly Perky's new exclusive line for Simon Says Stamp, get over there and check it out. Stamps, stickers, badges, stencils, and more, all made in the USA. SimonSaysStamp.com. Today's question comes from Patricia. Patricia asks, with the constant bombardment of gorgeous new products in the scrap world, it is so hard to keep from wanting all of it. Any tips on keeping the urges under control so that one can be a scrapper and not just a collector? That is a great question, Patricia, and I actually jotted down seven suggestions for you. So you are going to get more than you ever wanted to know on how to make sure you're scrapbooking and not just collecting. Number one is to make time to scrapbook because oftentimes I think we purchase instead of scrapbooking. We realize we don't have enough time to sit down and actually scrapbook, so we purchase, and by buying scrapbooking supplies, it moves us closer to scrapbooking, but it's a, really a false replacement for actually getting our hands on the page. So that's one thing I would say, suggest, is just to make sure you are scrapbooking regularly, because then you're going to be using up supplies, and you can replace them with new supplies. So that's number one. Number two is be intentional about what you buy. I can see tons of amazing pages and think, okay, well, if I just bought that flower or if I just bought that stamp or if I just bought X, Y, and Z, then I can create pages like that. Number one, that's not going to work. My style is my style. And just by buying the supplies somebody else that has doesn't mean I'm going to scrapbook like them. Number two, I could buy stuff that fits their style but doesn't fit my style. So suddenly I end up with all these random um, pieces that don't really cohese into anything that that is is something that I can use so it's like buying bits and pieces of a wardrobe you buy this necklace from that mannequin and that shirt from that mannequin and these shoes from over there but it doesn't really go together so be really intentional about purchasing things that purchasing things that fit your style and we actually have a fantastic class called defining your style from A to Z and people have had amazing success in going through that process and actually honing in on what makes their style their style and you do have a style trust me so that is number two being intentional and buying because you're actually going to use it and it's actually going to fit your style number three is to set a budget and that could be a dollar budget, whether it's um, $50 a month or $50 a quarter or $200 a month or whatever fits in your budget. And then only buy up to that point. And when you're done, you're done. Um, number It's easier said than done, isn't it? Number four is to replace one for one. This is something I've used in knitting because I love to knit, but I don't get very much time to do it. And knitting takes a lot longer to complete a project than scrapbooking does. So I would purchase and hoard yarn for future projects, but I would never actually get to use it because of the amount of time it took. So I put myself on a budget where I could only replace one skein of yarn when I used one up. So that kept my the level of my stash even. And then I eventually moved to using two and purchasing one because I really wanted to downsize my, my yarn stash. And that worked really well for me. It gave me permission to purchase new things, but it also helped me de-stash and actually use what I had. It was a great impetus to get some of those projects done. Um, number five is to look at kit clubs. I belong to two kit, kit clubs. One is Gossamer Blue. One is the monthly card kit through Simon Says Stamp, who is our um, sponsor for today. And they are amazing because they purchase things on my behalf. They're like personal shoppers. They pre-coordinate everything. They put it all together. So I'm getting new stuff, but I know it's going to work together. It's not like that bits and pieces approach that I talked about just a second ago where I'm bit, buying bits and pieces and none, none of it, none of it really works together it actually coordinates well and also they find stuff that I would never have thought to purchase or never have thought to put together so it's really fun to open the kit each month and see what's there so definitely check out kit clubs and it's a set dollar amount so you know you're only spending X amount per month so I really love kit clubs for that reason Number six is to shop your stash. We have a great scrap in our from 2012 by Gretchen Schmidt, and she talks about creating your own paper crafting kits. And she walks you through the 
process of setting up um, like a, a recipe for what would go in a scrapbooking kit. So you're making your own crafting kits from the stuff you already own. And it's a no cost way to shop your stash, explore what's there, coordinate and have some fun. And I'll put a link to that in the, um, in the page notes over on the blog. And number seven is just to, again, make sure you know what your goal of scrapbooking is. It's not about the product for me. It's not about even the photos. It's about the memories. And everybody's going to be a little bit different on this. So I'm not telling you this is the way you have to scrapbook. But for me, it starts with the story. It starts with the memory. And if I'm capturing that on the page, it doesn't really matter what else is on the page. And sure, I love to play with the fun stuff, the ribbons, the washi tape, you name it. I love it. Look at my room. But if somebody took all that away, I could still scrapbook because for me, it's about the stories, it's about the memories. So remember why you're scrapbooking and then the stuff becomes quite not so important, but a fun icing to add on the cake.